بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈاکٹر افتخار عظیم نیاز ویلکم یو بیک ان دا کورس آف انٹروڈکشن ٹو کمپیوٹنگ ان دا لیکچر نمبر ٹو آئی ہوپ دیٹ دا لاسٹ لیکچر ہیو بین کلیئر ٹو یو اینڈ یو ہیو ناٹ فائنڈ اینی ڈفیکلٹی ان انڈرسٹینڈنگ دی کانسیپٹس اینڈ کانٹینٹس آف دی لیکچر نمبر ون First of all, let me give you a brief tip for making your concepts clear and understand. The slides in my lectures, please use them for reference purpose. For clarity of the concepts and understanding of the uh, concepts, please study the te recommended textbook and associated reference material. I will strongly recommend you all to study the internet and visit different websites to get your concepts more clear and make yourself understand. So first of all, let me have the summary of the last lecture. In the lecture number one, we have discussed the course outline and the recommended books the marks distribution for the quizzes, assignments, sessionals, and terminal examination. And we also give you the textbook recommended and some references and recommended reference. Then we discuss what is a computer. In this context, we have used the definition of a computer and we studied the anatomy of a digital computer. Then we make the comparison of computer with human. The processing model of the computer is similar to the human. There will be some input that will be processed and that input will be converted into some output. In the same way, as we humans, we used our five senses for taking input from the environment. Most of the processing is done in the brain of the human and then using the different body parts, we gave the output. And then we delve into the history of computers. In this topic, we compare the analog and digital computers we discuss about the Abacus, Pascaline, Charles Babbage differential engine, punch cards, Mark I, Harvard Mark I, Manchester Mark I, ENIAC, ADWAG, etc. Then we discuss the developments in microcomputers from 1965 to 1984. In this development, we talk about the DEC PDP-8 and Intel microprocessors, floppy disks, Apple I, Commodore PET, IBM personal computers, Microsoft Windows, Apple uh, machines, laser jet printers. And then in the end, we discuss the five generations of the computers. The first generation uses the technology of vacuum tubes. Then the second generation used the technology of transistors. The third technology make you, the third generation of computer makes use of the very large scale, large integration in the ICs. The fourth one is the very large scale integration and the fifth generation is artificial intelligence based computers. So this what we have discussed in the lecture number one. I hope you have cleared all the concepts from lecture number one. Let's begin the, uh, uh, the uh, history of development of the microcomputers from 1986 to onwards. In 1986, IBM delivers the PC convertible, the first laptop computers, and the first Intel-based computer with the five 
with a 3.5 inch floppy disk drive. As you can see in the picture, this is the foldable one. These are the two floppy disk drives and this is the keyboard. The, the, uh, the screen size is not so big but it can be folded and it, can be, it is portable. You can take it anywhere. The size looks quite big as compared to the laptop computers which are now available in today's market. In 1986, the first international conference on CD-ROM technology is held in Seattle, Washington, United States of America, and it was hosted by Microsoft. Compact disks are seen as the storage medium of the future for computer users. It uses the laser or the light technology. Previously, the floppy disks were magnetic devices and we need magnetic medium to read those uh, disk floppy disks. The hard drives are also based on the magnetic medium. CD-ROM was the first device which used the laser technology and it can store more, much more data than the floppy disk. In 1987, IBM unveils the new PS2 line of computers featuring a 20 megahertz 80386 processor. IBM used the VGA means video graphic array monitor and it offers in two varieties for, for offering 256 colors at 320 into 200 resolution. This resolution means that on your screen there will be 320 dots in one line in the x-axis and there will be 200 lines in the y-axis and this resolution means called we call it a pixel pixel means picture element and each of the pixel can store 256 different colors for 16 colors the resolution was enhanced for to 640 by 480 pixels. In the same year, the Apple Macintosh 2 was launched. It uses the Motorola 68030 series of microprocessors, which are different from Intel. So the IBM PCs and Apple II Macintosh, they are two different personal computers. The software on IBM PC that works on IBM PC cannot be used on Apple Macintosh 2. The reason is the underlying hardware. The Apple Macintosh is using the Motorola 68000 series while IBM uses the Intel 2, uh, 386 machine uh, processors so they are not compatible with each other so that is why the software of one machine cannot be run on the other machine. In 1989, Intel releases the 80486 chip that is called, in short, it is called the 486 microprocessors. The power was more than the 386. In the same year, the World Wide Web was created at CERN for use by scientific researchers. This is the first of the internet but it was limited for scientific researchers. It was not made public use. In the same year, Microsoft introduces the for, uh, it's my, uh, Microsoft Word for Windows. Word is basically a word processing tool. Previously, Word for DOS has been the second highest selling word processing package behind Word Perfect. So after a few years, Word for Windows surpassed Word Perfect and it took the lead in the market. In 1990, the National Science Foundation Network replaces the ARPANET as the backbone of the Internet. In the same year, Motorola announces its 32-bit microprocessor, the 68040, incorporating 1.2 million transistors. 
So the capacity of the hardware is increasing and the size is decreasing. But at the same time, the softwares are also becoming more complex. The software engineering term was first coined in 1969 in a NATO conference. If we see in our previous lecture that from 1930s to 1970s most of the development was in the hardware side because the computers were very expensive and only the leading organizations such as the private uh, companies and the governments only they are using the computers. The people at home or in small businesses they cannot afford to use computers. So the most of the technology was used in big organizations so the users are very limited so they will they are devising their software for their own use. But since the micro uh, computers became popular the demand for more softwares are also encouraged. So the 70s and 80s saw the advancement in the software technology. Like in 1990, Microsoft releases Windows 3.0 operating systems. And with 1 million copies of this software was sold in four months. Now you can see that the demand for software is also increasing. The Windows basically it runs on 486 machines and 386 machines so that gives the power for Microsoft Windows to surpass and excel in the market. In 1991 Linus Torvalds releases the source code for Linux 0.01 which is basically a clone of Unix for the 80386 personal computer on the internet. So Linux becomes a operating system which is an open source. Open source means that the author write the code and distribute it freely on the internet so the other people can also modify and use the operating system for their own benefits. Apple computer launches the PowerBook series of battery powered portable computers. So the, with the use of the battery it becomes easy to carry your laptop and the PowerBook pieces around very easily and conveniently. The RISC-based chips were used in PowerPC microprocessor. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computers. Previously, the IBM PCs and all others, they are called CISC, C-I-S-C, Com uh, Complex Instruction Set Computers. So in the RISC computers, few micro instructions were used to solve all the problems. The number of instructions were reduced and the power of processing has been increased. In 1992, the internet becomes the world's largest electronic mail network. And in the same year, Microsoft enhances its operating system, Windows, and releases the three, Windows 3.1 operating environment, and which includes the improved memory management and true type fonts. In the same year, on the other side, IBM introduces its ThinkPad laptop computers. <coughs> in the figure, you can see one of the older pictures of the ThinkPad machines. In 1993, Microsoft ships the Windows NT operating system for network. Previously, in the network market, most of the servers, they were using Unix or Sun Solaris operating system. In the same year, IBM ships its first risk-baked RS6000 workstations. And this RS6000 workstation features the PowerPC 601 chip developed jointly by Motorola, Apple, and IBM. This is the figure of Motorola PC 601 microchip, and you can see how small it is. In 1995, 
Intel releases the Pentium Pro microprocessor, which is the 64-bit machine. Like 80286, 80386, 80486, Pentium should be 80586. But that city is the Intel make the Pentium registered in its own name so that no other company can use the word Pentium. Motorola in the same year releases the PowerPC 604 chip which is a risk based machine developed jointly with Apple and IBM. Microsoft releases its Windows 95 operating system with a new interface and a lot of facilities have been provided. Netscape Communications captures more than 80% of the world wide web browser market. Growing from a startup company to a 2.9 billion company in one year. So for internet web browsing, Netscape Communications was used. In the same year, Sun Microsystem created the Java development language which makes it to the market. It enables the programmers to develop applications that will run on any platform. It is the claim of Sun Microsystem that Java is platform independent. For each platform, Java virtual machine have been created. Now the users the, on the developers they will write the code in Java language and using the Java compiler they will translate the Java code into a Java bytecode which is an intermediate representation. That Java bytecode is basically interpreted by the concerned Java virtual machine which is different for every environment. The code remains the same and that bytecode can be run on any other machine using the Java virtual machine. The power computing ships the first ever Macintosh clones, the Power 100 series with the Power PC 601 processor. In the same year, eBay, the premier online auction house, is also formed and the concept of e-commerce has been started. In the year 1996, Intel announces the 200 megahertz Pentium processors. The US Robotics releases the Palm Pilot, a personal digital assistant. You can see this is the Palm Pilot and now it is easy to write the contacts, make notes, take initial diaries. And the Sun Microsystem, they introduces the Sun Ultra workstation that includes a 64-bit processor. Microsoft added the internet connection capability to its Windows 95 operating system so that it can be easy to use the internet on the Windows platform and the users can freely browse the internet. In 1997, Intel announces the MMX technology. MMX means multimedia facilities. And this technology increases the multimedia capabilities of a microprocessor. For multimedia instructions, they are heavier than the normal instructions. And when this is provided in the instruction set of the microchip, it becomes easy for the compilers to translate the programs for the multimedia content. Also in the same year Intel announces the Pentium 2 microprocessors and it has a speed of up to 333 megahertz. And in the same year the DVDs means digital video disk or some says digital versatile disk and that technology is introduced. In the normal CD-ROM, you can store data up to 650 or 700 megabytes. Whereas in the DVD, in one DVD with the same size, circular size, we can store 4.7 gigabytes of data. It means that around four, 
the data of the five or six rather CDs can be stored in one DVD. In the 1998, Microsoft releases the Windows 98 operating system. It also offered improved internet facilities and including a built-in copy of the Internet Explorer web browser. So it becomes a, compat a competitor for the Netscape communicator. Microsoft launches this Internet Explorer with the easy to use interface and more flexible and comparable to the Windows interface. So it becomes easy for the user who are using the Windows 98 to work on the Internet. In the same year, as you can see in the picture, the Apple computer releases the colorful iMac, an all-in-one system geared to a youthful market. So you can see that on the, in the picture that the keyboard and mouse are the extra, the processor, the CD-ROM, the speakers, they are all built in in one unit along with the monitor. This is iMac. In 1999, Intel unveils the Pentium 3 processor which features 9.5 million transistors. In the same year, the advanced micro devices with its Athlon microprocessor finally releases the Pentium class chip that outperformed the Pentium 3 processor. In the same year, Peter Merhels coins the term blog, which is a contraction of web log. In the older days, pe people used to write in the diaries at the night of their daily events. But now, the web log means blog. The people, they can write their recordings on the web, digitally. And they can store and retrieve and change anytime. In the same year, the Internet Assigned Number Agency begins assigning Internet Protocol addresses using the new IP version 6 addressing structure. In the year 2000, which is the millennium year, the Y2K issue comes up. The people were fearing that when the date change, year changed from 1999 to 2000, so maybe the works in the bank and economy will become a standstill. And we call it, at that time, it's a Y2K bug. But when it transit to the year 2000, no major damage resulted from the millennium date change. And it seems that Y2K was a hoax. In the same year, Microsoft introduces Windows 2000 on February 17. It was the biggest commercial software project ever attempted because 5,345 full-time participants were involved in developing Windows 2000. And its final product includes almost 30 million lines of code. So you can see how much complex the Windows 2000 was. The picture shows that the 2000 year celebrations were come as the Y2K worry disappears. So in the 2001, Microsoft releases the Windows XP operating system and the XP version of Microsoft Office is also unveiled. And in the same years, several versions of recordable DVD discs and drives were produced, such as DVD minus R, DVD plus R, DVD ROM, DVD RAM. And this makes the technology very helpful in recording audio, video, and sound. Most of the digital cameras and the digital video cameras started using the DVD technology. In year 2001, Apple introduces OS X, a new operating system for the Macintosh computers. 
This OS X is based on BSD, Berkeley Software Distribution Unix with a beautiful graphical interface and it becomes easy for the user to manipulate this system and to work easily on the different software. The same year for the youth, Apple introduces the iPod. It was a premium music player with a 5 gigabyte internal hard disk and that will store 1000 CD quality songs. In the figure you can see the iPod with its very nice interface. You can have the playlist, you can browse, you can have the extras, you can have the settings, you have the backlight and you can store mp3 and other formats, quality songs here. They are very small in size, very portable, easy to carry easy to use so while you are traveling on a bus or a train or while driving in the car while sitting in the car while riding the motorbike you can listen music anytime in 2002 the openoffice.org announces the release of openoffice.org this open office was a free full-featured suite of productivity applications which is compatible with the file formats used by Microsoft Office and many other Office suits. So the open office, the source code was open and easy to, for all the users to download and use it. It uses very little memory and it does not crashes much. Basically it the open office was an open source alternative to the expensive application source which cost a lot of money. The open office runs under Windows, Solaris, Linux, the Mac OS and the other operating systems. In the same year Microsoft launches its .NET strategy. New environment for development and running software applications featuring the ease of use and web-based services. Basically it is a framework with an object-oriented technology. The DVD writers begin to replace the CD writers, digital video cameras are introduced, tablet PC is introduced as next generation mobile PC. In the same year on the hardware side Intel ships Pentium 4 chip with hyper-threading technology and the speed of Pentium 4 was 3.06 gigahertz. In year 2003, Microsoft launches MS Office 2003. More than 400 million people in 175 nations and 70 languages are using a version of MS Office. Latest operating systems in the same year they started including support for Wi-Fi which is short for wireless fidelity and Bluetooth standards. So using the Wi-Fi technology and Bluetooth the use of wireless keyboards, mouse devices, home networks, and wireless internet access points become common. Now it is easy to browse and connect to the world using different devices and not using the cable. In the same year Apple opens an online music store called iTunes offering more than 200,000 music titles at just $0.99 each or means you can say 99 cents for a song. It becomes very cheap. In the 2004 Apple iTunes sold nearly 20 million songs. On the hardware side USB flash drives are produced and it becomes very easy to transport data from one place to another. On the monitor side flat panel LCD monitors were introduced. LCD stands for liquid crystal display. Radio frequency identification RFID 
tags were introduced the, for the shopping. Smartphones overtakes the personal digital assistants as the personal mobile devices of the choice. In the same year, Apple computer introduces iMac G5. It is a computer display device which contains the system unit. In 2005, Apple releases the latest version of iPod Portable. Microsoft introduces the Visual Studio 2005. Microsoft also release, releases the Xbox 360 game console to make comparison with the stony PlayStation. Blogging and podcasting becomes the mainstream events of the year. In 2006, Sony launches its PlayStation 3 with the Wi-Fi and WiMAX capabilities. Google becomes the most used search engine, capturing 54% of the market share, surpassing Yahoo and Microsoft. Intel introduces the Core 2 Duo processor family. It means on one core, there will be two different processors. And Core 2 Duo processor contains 291 million transistors on a single chip. So the heat was so much, so you need to add fans with the processor to disseminate the heat generated by the processor during calculation and its operations. Apple begins the selling the Macintosh computers with Intel microprocessors. So now it becomes the IBM PC compatible and it is easy to transport uh, software from the Windows environment to the Apple Mac environment. IBM produces the fastest supercomputer called Blue Gene Slash L. And you can think the speed of the supercomputer that it can perform 28 trillion calculation in a blink of an eye. Normally we blink the eye in one tenth of a second. So in one tenth of a second, this much short time, it can perform 28 trillion calculations. So fast. Just imagine how fast it is. In 2007, Microsoft releases the Office 2007 suit. Microsoft Office Vista operating system is introduced. Blu-ray and HD DVD in increase in popularity. HD stands for high definition. It means more resolution, more clear picture, and the storage capacity was increased. Like the DVD, one DVD can store 4.7 gigabytes, whereas one Blu-ray disc can store 25 gigabytes. You can see the difference. Intel introduces core to quad technology. The four core processor made for dual processor servers and desktop computers. Large number of cores allow for more energy efficient performance and less on the battery. Apple introduced the iPhone and sells 270,000 phones in first two days. In 2008, Microsoft introduces Windows Server 2008, which is a successor to Windows Server 2003 for the server environment. Online social networks continue to grow in popularity. MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, they are the most widely used social networks. And combined social networking websites total almost 1 billion users. That was in 2008, now it is 2012. So you can just imagine how many users are using the social network. YouTube continues to gain users. now. Every day we see a lot of small movies, sounds, and every, uh, funny clips on the YouTube. The WiMAX goes live. It has the capability to access video, music, voice, and video calls wherever, 
and whenever desired. The average download speed for WiMAX is between 2 megabits per second to 4 megabits per second. So now we'll use, we'll see the computer for the individual use. Up till now we have discussed the development of microcomputers and software from 1965 to 2008. Computers can be shared by multiple users but can be used by only one person at a time. So we are talking about the desktop computers which is used by a certain individual. However that simple one PC it can be used by more than one person at different times. So let's discuss that how the computers affect the individual life. There are six primary types of personal computers or PC. A PC basically it is a term that refers to any computer system that is designed for use by a single person. Personal computers are also called microprocessors because they are among the smallest computers created for people to use. There are six primary types of personal computers. We call it the desktop computers, there are workstations, the notebook computers, the tablet computers, the handheld computers and the smartphones. <coughs> Although PCs are used by individuals, they can also be connected together to create networks. And networking is a key task for today computers, especially the portable systems that allows users to connect to their home or office even when they are traveling. Sun Microsystems makes the most popular workstations on the planet. Sun systems are used in diverse applications such as the medical imaging and computer generated image animations. In fact, networking has become one of the most important job of personal computers and even tiny handheld computers can now be connected to the networks. The desktop computers, the most common type of computers which, is, which sits on the desk or floor, it performs a variety of tasks. You see all around in schools, in homes and in offices the desktop computers. Today's computers are far more powerful than those of a just a few years ago and are used in for an amazing array of tasks. Not only do these machines enable people to do their jobs with greater ease and efficiency, but they can be used to communicate, produce music, edit photographs and videos and play sophisticated games and much more. And it can be used by everyone from preschoolers to nuclear physicists, desktop computers are basically indispensable for learning, work, and play. The desktop computers, they come in different designs, types. There are two common models. One is called the desktop model, which is you can see around here. And the other is the tower model. The more traditional desktop features a horizontally oriented system unit which usually lies flat on the table. Many users place their monitor on top of the system unit. The vertically oriented tower model have become more popular style of desktop computers. This design allows the user to place the system unit next to the system on the on the table or it can be placed under the table. Workstations. You can see a workstation here. 
these are the specialized single user computers they are optimized for science or graphics use and they are much more powerful than a desktop machine a workstation is a specialized and single user computer that typically has more power and feature than a PC these machines are very popular among scientists engineers and animators who need a system with greater than average speed and the power to perform sophisticated tasks workstations often have large high-resolution monitors and accelerated graphic cards making them suitable for advanced architectural or engineering design modeling animation and video editing next comes the notebook computers they are small portable computers weighs between three to eight pounds about eight and a half by eleven inches but nowadays smaller notebook computers are also available the notebook computers approximately there you can fit into a briefcase because people frequently set these devices on their laps they are also called the laptop computers they can uh, operate on alternating current or they can also operate on special lithium ion batteries during use the computer lid is raised to reveal a thin monitor and a keyboard when not in use the device is folded up and it can be carried very easily around notebooks are fully functional microcomputers the people who use them need the power of a full size desktop computer wherever they go because of their popularity the notebook pcs fall into the category of devices called mobile computers system are small enough to be carried by their users some notebook systems are designed to be plugged into a docking station let's see what is a docking station it provides additional ports that enable the notebook computer to be connected to different devices or a network in the same manner as a desktop system here you can see the laptop computer is attached with a docking system station and through this docking station we can connect to the internet modem you can connect to a monitor to a joystick speakers external CD handheld computers printers mouse keyboard scanner you name it and you can have it use with the with your notebook computer the tablet computers this is the newest development in portable computers the input is basically through a stylus or a digital pen it runs the specialized version of office products and some models they have a fold out keyboard and some models can be connected to a keyboard and a full size monitor <coughs> we call it a digital pen or it, it is also called a stylus the next category of the personal computer is the handheld PCs the, we also call them the palm computers they are very small computers personal digital assistants are outclassed by these handheld PCs they are basically used for note taking or contact management and the data within the hand palm computer can be synchronized with a desktop or a notebook machine most personal digital assistants they come with a pen or called stylus that lets the user write on the screen and some handheld computers they feature tiny built-in keyboards or microphones that allow voice input many personal digital assistants let the user access the internet through a wireless connection and several models offer features such as cellular telephones 
cameras, music players and the GPRS global positioning system. Next come the smartphones which are very popular nowadays. The smartphones is basically a hybrid of cellular phone and PDA. The, uh, the figure shows the Nokia 9500 communicator. It is double as the tiny computers offering many of the features of the PDAs. Nowadays in the market we can see the Samsung Galaxy Note, Apple iPhone, Nokia N7, E72, Nokia C6. So many smartphones are there which have the capability of cellular phone as well as the PDAs and even you can work on the office suits. They also have the capability of a digital camera or the music players. Some models even break in half to reveal a miniature keyboard. Now let's talk about the computer which are used for the organization. Previously we were discussing the use of computers for individuals. For organization the needs are different. Some computers handle needs of many users at the same time. And these powerful systems are used by organizations such as businesses, schools, government organizations. Commonly found at the heart of the organization network, we can see the network servers, mainframe computers, mini computers, and supercomputers. In the network servers is usually powerful personal computer with special software and equipment which enable it to function as the primary computer in the network. Basically the network servers they are the centralized servers. All other computers connect to the network server for access to the other systems. In many companies workers they use their desktop systems to access a central shared computer called a network server. PC based servers and networks are very common in organizations. It provides access to network resources. When multiple servers are con are connected together they are called server forms like form houses but often a network server can be a simple simply a powerful desktop and you can google it around when the organization is done in class in this form it is called clusters or server forms network servers may not even re resemble like standard PCs for example, they may be mounted in large racks as shown in the figure or reduced to small units called blades, which can be slid in and out of a case. In these large networks, different groups of servers may have different purposes, such as supporting a certain set of users, handling printing tasks, enabling internet communications, and so forth. It has the flexibility to different kinds of tasks. A PC based server gives users the flexibility to do different kinds of tasks. This is because the personal computers are general purpose. They are designed to use in many ways. For example, some users may rely on the server for their email access some may use it for performing accounting tasks and others may use it to perform word processing or database management jobs. The server can support these processes and many others while storing information and programs for many people to use. The, in the network servers the user use the internet 
as a means of connecting even if they are away from the offices. Many users, they can access their organization networks from their home, from their hotels, from their recreation points, even from their cars, no matter where they go. Depending on the how this network is set up, the users may be able to access the servers in multiple ways. Of course, most users have a standard desktop PC on their desk that is permanently connected to the network. Mobile users, however, may be able to connect a notebook PC or a handheld device to the networks by the wireless means, means Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and so on, when they are away from the office. Users may be able to use the internet as a means of connecting to the company's network servers. Mainframes. Mainframe computers are used in large organizations, such as insurance companies, banks, airline, railway system, where many people frequently need to use the same data. In a traditional mainframe environment, each user accesses the mainframe resource through a device called a terminal. The mainframe basically handles thousands of users and the users access through a terminal. Basically, there are two types of terminals. One is called a dump terminal and the other is called intelligent terminal. Let me clarify the terms of intelligent terminal and dump terminal. A dump terminal does not process or store data. It is simply an input-output device that functions as a window into a computer located somewhere else, means the server. An intelligent terminal can perform some processing functions, but it usually does not have any storage. It some, in some mainframe environments, however, the workers, they can use a standard personal computer to access the mainframe. They are the large and powerful systems. You can see the centralized systems. Next comes the mini computers called the mid-range computers. It has the power between mainframe and a desktop. Handles hundreds of users used in small organizations. The users access through a terminal. The, capable, the capabilities of a, mic, of a mini computer are somewhere between those of mainframes and personal computers. For these re reasons, mini computers are often called the mid-range. Like mainframes, the mini computers can handle much more input and output than the personal computer can do, although some minis are designed for a single user. The most powerful mini computers can serve the input and output needs of hundreds of users at a time. Users can access a central mini computer through a terminal or a standard PC. Next comes the supercomputers. The most co powerful computers made handles large and complex calculations. Previously, in the, uh, some of the earlier slides, I've told about the blue uh, uh, scene uh, supercomputer, and it can process 28 trillions of instructions in a blink of an eye, that is one tenth of a second. These supercomputers are mostly found in research organizations. And physically, they are the largest. They can process huge amount of data. And the fastest supercomputers can perform more than one trillion calculations per second. 
some supercomputers can house thousands of processors. Supercomputers are ideal for handling large and highly complex problems that require extreme calculating power. For example, supercomputers have long been used in the mapping of the human genome, forecasting weather, and modeling complex processes like nuclear fusion. Now let's come to the next topic of our discussion that will be the use of computers in our society and how it affect our society. The computers have made more impact than any other invention. The two terms which we have been hearing from many people that computers have changed our world or the computers have changed the way we do. It has changed our work and leisure activities. It is used by all demographic groups from the preschool children to the old age people. All are using computers nowadays in one way or another. Let's see why computers are important for us. They are important because they provide information to the users. And information is very critical part of our society. And managing the information is becoming increasingly difficult. And this is the place where computers comes in to help us in managing information. Let's talk the impact of computers. We are like the impact of automobiles. Le when the automobiles come, it change the lifestyles of the people. Because of the car, the people were able to transfer faster and farther and cheaper than ever before. Because vehicles could be mass produced, the nature of manufacturing and industry changed and throngs of people began working on assembly lines. Now because of road development, suburbs becomes a feasible way for people to live closely to a city without actually living in one of the city. And because of car travel, motels, restaurants and shopping centers sprang up in different places where they had previously been nothing. And recently in the last 10 years we have seen that during the construction of the motorway from Peshawar till Karachi, a lot of motels, restaurants, layered areas, they have been increased alongside the motorway. So that makes an impact on our society. So similarly, the computers, they also make the impact on our lives. The benefits of using a computer, they are as varied as users. Let's see in the, in the three persons, for disabled persons, for a sales professional, and for a researcher. For someone with a disability, a computer may offer freedom to communicate, learn, or work without leaving the home. For a sales professional, a computer may be the workhorse that docks painstaking and time-consuming calculations. For a researcher, it is very helpful for, for uh, storing data and doing the complex and tricky calculations. Now, computers at home, we have many homes, uh, many homes have multiple computers. Most American homes, they have the internet, but now the same thing is happening in Pakistan. The computer are used for communication, such as email, the most popular. In, uh, in at homes, the computers are also used for the business, entertainment, schoolwork, and finances. Many people have started business from their homes using the computer. And even in, in the entertainment part, you can watch movies, you can learn many things. Most of the schoolwork can be done and it helps the student in searching the internet and finding uh, the required answers. 
Similarly, for financial management, the computers can be used by home by accessing your banks and making transactions, money transactions all around the world and while sitting at your home. Computers in education. The computer literacy is required at all levels. More and more schools, they are adding computer technology to their curricula. The educators, they see computer technology as an essential learning requirement for all students starting as early as preschool. As you can see, this, the young children, they are using the internet and the computer for fun, for learning, for entertainment. And with many softwares developed, it is easy to learn many new things while playing games you can do it computers in the small businesses it makes the businesses more profitable it allows owners to manage and grow their computer it is easy for the small businesses to contact their customers and their other stakeholders and to give them access and to contact them frequently. The, uh, you can also make the payments online and you, the things can be delivered at your doorstep within a day or two. Similarly, the computers, they have revolutionized our industry. Computers are used to design products. Assembly lines are automated. The computer-aided design programs, they allow the engineers to design and test new products and even to control the machines that manufacture them. In the shipping, the freight companies need computers to manage the thousands of ships, planes, trains and trucks that are moving goods at any given moment. In addition to tracking vehicle locations and contents, computer can manage the maintenance driver schedule, invoices, billing, and many other activities. In the process control, the modern assembly lines, they can be massive, complex systems, and a breakdown at one point can cause chaos throughout a company. The sophisticated process control systems, they can oversee the output, check the speed at which a machine runs, it can manage conveyance system and look at part inventories with very little human interaction. I have seen in Japan that robots and computers, they are manufacturing cars with very little human intervention. Computers are also used by the government. It is necessary to track data for population. The police officers, they are using to, to capture the criminals, the tax calculation and collections that also be used. Basically in the beginnings, governments were the first computer users. Today, the taxes, they can be collected by the FBR. The military, some of the world's most sophisticated computer technology have been developed primarily for use by the military. In fact, some of the earliest digital computers were created for such purposes as calculating the trajectory of missiles. Today, from payroll management to weapons control, the armed forces use the widest array of computer hardware and software imaginable. Computers are also used in healthcare. They have rev revolutionized the healthcare. New treatments become possible. Many operations have been, been performed using the computers. The scheduling of patients in clinics and hospitals, they have been improved. And delivery of medicine, they have become safer by using computers and keeping track of the records of the patients. Let's summarize the today's lecture. 
We have discussed the developments in microcomputers from 1984 to 2008. Then we discuss the computer for individual use. We see its different uses like PCs, tablet PCs, notebook, handheld, smartphones. Then we use how computers have been used for organizations such as mini computers, mainframes, supercomputers, network servers. And finally, we have seen how computers have made an impact on our society in the education sector, healthcare, governments, schools, small businesses, industry, and all that. I sincerely hope that today's lecture was informative for you and most of the things that I have discussed have become clear to you. Inshallah, we'll meet next week in the next lecture. I pray for your success. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.